Malo, Konamari, Farid Alafatu, Kirana, and Metuati Koka. And my name is Ulrich Speidel. Together, we'd like to introduce our project, Improving Internet Connectivity in Pacific Island Countries with Network Code at TCP. Which we are carrying out here at the University of Auckland on behalf of the Pacific Island Chapter of the Internet Society, Picasso. Supported by the ISIF Asia Information Society Innovation Fund. As you will probably know, the Internet carries traffic in the form of small snippets of data called packets. Many Pacific Islands get their internet connection via a gestationary satellite. These satellites operate almost 36,000 kilometers above the equator. Internet packets take about a quarter of a second to get from a satellite ground station on the internet's fiber backbone to the satellite and back down to an island. And that's under ideal circumstances. They still have to reach the satellite gateway on the internet from wherever they were transmitted from. That could be, for example, maybe another 100 or 200 milliseconds away, on another continent perhaps. And then they have to wait at the satellite gateway until this gateway has uplink capacity available to forward them. And that waiting time can be substantial if the satellite link is heavily loaded, which is unfortunately a common scenario in the Pacific because the satellite bandwidth is so expensive and therefore so rare. For example, the only satellite connection of one of the countries we work with only has the bandwidth of a couple of residential ATSL lines in New Zealand. Moreover, if packets arrive at a gateway faster than you can forward them, they will be discarded or dropped, as we say. To make matters worse, that problem is aggravated by the most common protocol on the Internet, TCP, the Transmission Control Protocol. TCP's job is to ensure that data packets actually arrive at the far end at the receiver. So what TCP does is that it gets the receiver to send an acknowledgement packet for every data packet it has received. Now that acknowledgement packet has to travel the opposite way to the data packet back to the sender, with the same risk of having to wait at the gateway and getting dropped. So if I'm the computer sending the data, and you don't hear my acknowledgement, then I'll eventually, after a long time, simply send my data packet again, even if you already have it. Which means you add to the congestion at the satellite gateway something that isn't exactly helpful. Moreover, you also then delay your further transmissions, which helps a little to ease congestion at the gateway, but doesn't really help my throughput when I'm trying to download stuff from you. That problem has been recognized for quite a while. And so colleagues of ours at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology in uh, Cambridge, Massachusetts in the United States, under the leadership of Professor Muriel Medar, have come up with what we think is a better way, network coded TCP. The way network coded TCP works is based on simple high school maths, sets of linear equations. Maybe you remember having to solve them at school, three equations with three unknowns, like this one here, or four equations with four unknowns, and so on. Each equation multiplies each unknown variable, like x, y, and z here, with a number called a coefficient, like the 3, 5, and minus 2 here, and then adds all those products up. The idea in network coded TCP is that our original data packets play the role of the unknowns. If I'm the sender and Edward is the receiver, I send him a set of linear equations and he gets to work out the unknowns. So as a transmitter, I take several data packets, multiply each of them with a coefficient and then add all of them together. This is called a linear combination. Now comes the trick. Instead of transmitting the original data packets, I transmit new packets that contain the coefficients and the result of the linear combination only. I transmit one such packet for each equation and I cre create at least as many such equation packets as I have original packets. Again, you may remember from high school that you need at least as many equations as unknowns to solve a system of linear equations, and that's really all we do here. At the receiver, which is at my end, I then get to collect the new data packets until I have enough so to solve the system of equations. 
which lets me compute their nodes, i.e. recover your original data packets. So as long as Ulrich knows how many linear combinations I have seen, he can work out how many of the original packets I have been able to recover. He then simply drops this from the new linear combinations he generates and adds new data packets to them. Now what happens if one of my packets with a linear combination is dropped or gets delayed? Simple, the next linear combination that I send can be used as a substitute equation for the one that was lost. But remember, the packet for this equation is already on its way. Remember, I generate more than one equation for a set of unknowns, and I keep on including the data for this set of unknowns in my new equations until I hear from Edward that he has been able to recover the data. This means that I don't ever have to wait for you to time out and retransmit. So there will be very few retransmissions. The redundancy in the data gets included in the next linear equations. One of the things that really trips up TCP is if the run trip time for the acknowledgement handshake varies. And that's just what happens when the gateway gets congested. But narrow coded TCP isn't affected by that. Which is why it should work well across satellite gateways. Because there's still the acknowledgement loop that tells us, or tells the transmitter, how many coded packets have been received, we still have a mechanism to control the transmission rate. So network coders at TCP also won't squeeze out other traffic as UDP can sometimes do. MIT have developed software for network coded TCP. We will be trying to deploy this as a proof of concept in Kiribati, Tuvalu and the Cook Islands under this pilot project. If this proves to be a workable solution and leads to the improvement in throughput we expect, we hope to see this deployed more widely so people can make the best use of the expensive satellite resource. So, hopefully, we'll be the first to Skype you in some of the islands soon.